What's up, CHFFL? Welcome to the 2023 previews. We are less than one week from the draft. Hope you're as excited as I am. It's going to be a great trip. It's going to be another great season. Be sure to have Discord on. Be sure to have your notifications turned on so you're getting any updates, even if you're going to be remote. Uh, I guess, you know, everything's going to be in flux a little bit as we figure this out. For the first time doing an in-person draft since we used to go down into my, my old basement. Now, you probably noticed that this is going to be a long format video, maybe one to have on in the background like a podcast, or maybe one you're going to want to watch in parts. I'll have, try to have timestamps so you can jump to every team, but we're going to do the whole league in this one video. We got to go over last year's previews first and the results because I think it's very important this year. Do you remember AVC? AVC was adjusted value calc. I came up with this last year to account for keeper value shift. It was really, really cool, really smart. It's gone because I'm lazy and I don't feel like doing it this year. That said, the 2022 previews were really good. They were really accurate compared to in the past. It's it's kind of been a fun thing and maybe a few I got right, but nah, last year they were pretty close. The value calc, the machine math program that I run to do the calculations and come up with the numbers picked the top four teams, not in perfect order, but the four top four teams all finished in the top four. My personal rankings, the top five, all finished in the top five. That was pretty good. Let's look at this chart here showing all of them. You see myself, I was ranked number one in the math and in my rankings, I won the ship. Swan was ranked third and finished second. Grant, reverse of that, he's always number three. Mark, fourth. Banis in fifth. I got all five of those guys. Big outliers, um, mini. I had ranked 7th. The VC had ranked 10th. He ended up finishing 11th overall. And then Stan and Marty both also finished a little lower than expected. But for the most part, you look at this chart of my ranks versus the normal ranks and then the VC and AVC. And those R squareds are a lot better than what we've seen in the past. So a lot of that had to do with uh, high standard deviation and a few teams were outliers clearly in the previews. The numbers reflected it. And then the teams, like my team, I was just destroyed with injuries in the middle of the season. But uh, there was one game against Grant where I couldn't even start a full roster for one week. But we had the depth to keep above water and make it through. I expect this year to be a lot more competitive. I have the word a lot more competition. I have that word here. I just mean that it'll be more up in the air from start to finish. And the top seven to nine in particular are going to be bunched together. Standard deviation is lower. Uh, for the purpose of these previews, the average VC this year was 283. For value shift, now remember this is the concept that because of keepers, you're not going to be able to get the as good of a guy as you would in a non-keeper league easy example jefferson and chase are both being kept this year so assuming you have them as top five picks then at pick five you're not going to get the fifth the best player you're going to get the seventh best player if we all rank everybody the same it's going to be lower overall this year but it's higher early and i post about this in the com or the commission desk channel of the discord the second round in particular, starting at pick 13, is going to get hit hard. We can see in the chart here and here the key numbers. At the start of round two, it'll be four. So for th pick 13, you can expect the 17th best player if we all have the same rankings. And at the end of round two, it's up to eight. So pick 24, you're talking about number 32. Then it stays in that eight to 10 range until a, it about pick 84 you know the eighth round is where a lot of people keep because they're able to keep people picked off of waivers and it hits zero and about the 11th round all for your reference some people probably don't even think about that but i think it's very important when planning for the draft in our league to take value shift into consideration now that's out of the way we can finally get into previews and we're going to start with banis in the Attitude Era Conference, Swan's name for the Professional Wrestling Conference. In 2022, Banis finished with a rank of 5th, 
He sold his second round pick for this year, but he had a good offseason with the keeper news that I talked about in my last video. So he's not out of it and he's not in the bottom. Uh, Banis picks fourth overall. Like I said, no second. He has an extra five, though. No six or seven. And pretty much normal from there out. Looking at his keepers, the big one discussed in my last video is Calvin Ridley. ECR, when I did these, I made these slides about a week ago, say around August 10th, and I don't think too much has changed. ECR for Ridley is 35. Banis can keep him in round 11. Currently, that would be pick 124, so that's a huge value. And I love this kind of a keeper because Ridley has this bit of an unknown factor to him after missing so much time and being able to keep him late you get a free gamble, right? With unlimited upside. Bill hit on this a lot in the Two Tight Ends podcast that Trevor Lawrence taking a step forward. Ridley could be a low-end wide receiver one if Bannis is getting this late. That's really why his team is still able to be competitive this year. Mark Andrews, too, another good pick. ECR is 31. He can have him at round four, pick 45. Uh, something, something. Remember Mark Andrews for a six. That was funny. Uh, my next top keeper for Bannis is A.J. Brown. Now, the big difficulty here is that he needs to be kept in the second and Bannis doesn't have a second, but his ECR is 11. I think you sell you sell a third, you sell a fifth if you have to, to move up to the second because right now your second pick is going to be in the third round, which value shift, you're looking at like 40th overall. You go and get this top guy so you can build your team around 1-4, and then the 11th best guy, according to Fantasy Pros. As an alternative, if he doesn't want to do that, Jacoby Myers, ECR is 96. Bannis and Jason can keep him in round 10 at pick 117. That would be a decent value too. But I say go make a trade, make it happen, get a second round pick. His VC right now, without accounting for any trades, is 266. So below average a good bit. But still, with Ridley, assuming he can go get Brown, he has Mandrews, and then fourth overall, I, I think Brad can be competitive this year. He has to hit on his running backs, and at 1-4, he certainly can get a good one. I'm putting Bannis right in our B tier, middle of the road, but not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Next, let's talk about Stan, also in the Attitude Era Conference. In 2022, Stan finished the rank of nine. He didn't do a lot of building for finishing in the bottom half of the league. You'll see his draft board. He picked six overall, has his two, three, four, five. An extra seven is nice, but that's the only shift. So you think if you're going to be in the bottom half, you would have gotten something at the trade deadline. Stan did not manage to do that. But his keepers are straightforward. He's going to keep someone in rounds three, four, five. Easy picks. Tony Pollard, ECR 16. You're happy to take him round three, pick 30. T. Higgins, ECR 24. Happy to take him round four, pick 43. Drake London, ECR 43. Happy to take him round five, pick 53. Those are three solid ones for Stan. He has a running back taken care of there. A low end RB1, we say. Mid to low end, depending on the ranking. Some people really like Pollard. Uh, two wide receivers. So his flex position is already full filled out. 1-6 is a really nice spot before the big cliff from keeper value shift, so he should be able to get a good pick in the first round. I'm wondering if he's going to take Derrick Henry, who I think will be on the board for him there. 2-7 uh, will probably be after the cliff, but still not bad. Stan is going to have a very good fighting chance to make the playoffs this year, and uh, he deservedly is one partial tier above Bannis. I have him at a B plus. Next, we have Bill. Let's move over to the Fantasy Heart and Soul Conference. Bill finished his rookie season in the CHFFL, ranked 6th elite draft board this year. Picking 5th overall, he has round 2, pick 3, which he got thanks to my winning the championship. And then his 2, he has an extra 4th. Everything else is in place, so no really late picks. The extra 2, extra 4, very big for him. Keepers... He has Chris Olave, or Olave for those of you who speak English. ECR is 19. Uh, he can be kept at round six, pick 68. Very nice value there. Justin Fields, 
ECR is 54. Bill can keep him round eight, pick 92. Another, it's nice to have your quarterback. I like, I like keeping a quarterback or a tight end. I like having the position taken care of. And uh, as a borderline pick, Bill could keep Brian Robinson. ECR is 105 when I made these slides. He could keep him round 10, pick 116. Evan Ingram, probably not. Depends on how high he is on him. ECR is 100, and he would need to go trade for an additional eighth because he's using the one on fields. So I don't think that's going to happen. Either way, you got two solid keepers there. The extra high round two pick. It's a bit of a concern even at 2-3 is going to be right in the middle of that that cliff that I keep hammering on. So he's probably going to get, instead of maybe a Tier 2 player, a Tier 3 player, depending on what rankings you're you're looking at. But boy, Bill looks good with a VC of 355 this year. He gets to go up, and he's our first S team of the year. Next, Bill's partner on the Two Tight Ends podcast, Grant. Also in the Fantasy Heart and Soul Conference, <laughs> Grant is the opposite story. His draft board is decimated. 2022, he finished in his favorite position, third at the end of the year. Grant has his eighth overall pick, no second, no fourth, no fifth, no ninth. And then five picks after round 13. I got tired of writing all of those in the later rounds. So we're going to have to do this with keepers. And it's not completely out of the realm of possibility for Grant to make a run at it this year. Travis Etienne, ECR is 40. Grant can keep him in the 8th. That's nice. That's solid. Amon Ross St. Brown, this is big, even though it's going to eat up his third round pick. But to get a nice top 15 guy, ECR had him at 13 when I made these slides at pick 32. That's really good value for Grant. And that's the type of thing you have that core. I feel like you need that core. Yeah, you're trying to hit on some late guys, but you need the core to build around. ARSB plus his first pick, which what did I say was? Eighth. Eighth is right there. Eighth, eighth is right at the edge. I really don't like being at 110. 18 seems pretty good for Grant. He can turn that into something. He also can keep David Njoku, get the tight end spot out of the way. ECR is 110, round 11. Pick 128 is where Grant would keep him, so he's definitely going to do that. I know he's a big fan of Njoku. VC is 198, really low. It's not ideal, but I like Grant better than the numbers show this year, and it's going to be one of my more controversial placements by the time this is over because the keepers provide some hope. I have him solidly as a C, and you'll see why that's iffy going forward, but I like Grant the most out of the the bottom tier. We'll see as we go forward. But next, we're going to go to someone who's a little brighter, has a little brighter outlook. Mark, back over in the Attitude Era Conference, had a 2022 rank of fourth, and his team has just been all about Chase as long as he can keep keeping him, and he sure can this year. Mark picks seventh overall, lost his fourth round pick and his ninth, Otherwise, everything all intact, and he can keep Jamar Chase, who I, I have listed here as an ECR of two. I mean, he and Jefferson, he, Jefferson, and McCaffrey, I think right now they're kind of equal arguments for being number one overall. So I'm just keeping Jefferson and Chase as two because for the VC calculator, if I throw one in there, it's a huge difference. Uh, and since they're all tied, I'm evening it out to two. But Chase, Mark can still keep him in round five, pick 55, which means we're going to have to put up with this for another year, probably two years. It is what it is. Another really nice keeper for Mark, Devonta Smith, and this makes up for his draft board being below average. ECR is 22, and Mark can keep him at round six. That'll be pick 66 right now. Alternative, if Mark wants to try and get a third one in there, Joe Burrow, his ECR is 47. Mark doesn't have a round four pick, though, and... With Chase being kept in the fifth and Smith in the sixth, it, that means he's probably trading back from the third to get a fourth. I don't know if he'll want to do that, but I think it would be a valid option, and I wouldn't fault him if he'd tried to. Mark's VC comes in at 299 with the balance of the bad board, but the really good keepers, uh, elite receivers. He's going to have Chase Smith. It's just a great one, too, even if he doesn't draft anybody else in those top couple rounds. 
playoffs are definitely in reach again for him in what I expect to be a very competitive attitude era conference. Mark, I'm putting in the B plus tier and I'm sliding him in in front of Stan. I just am a sucker for whoever's going to have those top five guys. And so Chase for me gives Mark that little boost. Also, the fact that Mark's all time record against Stan is tremendous and they're in the same conference. So they're going to play each other twice. Got to give Mark that little bit of an edge, but they're in the same tier. So they're they're close. And maybe this is finally time for Stan to step up and break the curse, so to speak. Max is our next team. Jumping back over to Fantasy Heart and Soul. Max finished dead last in 2022. The perfect cycle of championship, sell everything to get it, and then go into rebuild mode the next year. Well, now Max is rebuilt and ready to compete. He is picking at the end of the first round, which I'm not a big fan of. Round one, pick 11, but he has an extra four, an extra eighth, an extra ninth, and nothing after round 12. Max is going to be able to load up on a lot of that mid-round talent, upper-level mid-round talent, and he has nice keepers to go with it. Well, a nice keeper. Garrett Wilson, first, my number one mover of the offseason in terms of keeper value with Aaron Rodgers coming to town. Check out that video if you haven't yet. ECR for Wilson was 14. Max can keep him round 7, pick 83. That's tremendous value for a young guy who will definitely be a chase-like multi-year keeper. Not saying Wilson's going to be ranked number two overall next year, but I find it very doubtful Max won't be keeping him again. Max could also keep Justin Herbert if he wants, and I same thing as with Joe Burrow. I wouldn't really blame him. ECR, 53. Right now his round four is pick 41, but he could trade back from that because that's at the beginning of the fourth round. And then if you account for keeper shift, it'd be nice to get that quarterback position out of the way. Otherwise, so with Max, you have all these. You have the extra fourth. You have an extra eight and nine. You have Garrett Wilson. You're picking at the end of the first and the top of the second. You're not going to be wanting to punt quarterback. So if he doesn't keep Herbert here, I think he's going to want to reach a little bit. So I could understand keeping Herbert. I could understand not. That's going to be a gut call Max is going to have to make. Kadarius Tony, another possible keeper. ECR is 97. Max would need to go and get a second seventh with Garrett Wilson taking up the first one. And I don't see him keeping Tony, but I thought it was within the realm of possibility, so I put it here. Max's VC is the highest other than Bills that we've seen so far at 325. He's a good board, one great keeper, with only really one keeper. It's not enough for him to be in that Bill super team tier i'm putting max as an a which is showing that i do think there is a significant jump between he and then mark and stan but he is also a good bit behind bill to at least start the year next back to the attitude era conference mini 2022 his final rank was 11 and this year he comes in kind of middle of the pack with Bannis and Stan, that kind of feeling to the team. Picks number three overall, which is really nice. He'll get one of the top choices. Of course, Jefferson and Chase are gone, so but still he's looking at the equivalent of a top five pick there. The rest of his board, oh, forgot. The big, the big get of last year, an extra ninth that he got for Alvin Kamara. Beautiful. Look at it up there. It's gorgeous. And, I don't want to make fun of Minnie too much. I really like what Minnie did in the draft last year, even though it didn't work out for him. So I'm interested to see how he plays it this year. Otherwise, his board is standard. Tyler Lockett, ECR 51, can be kept at pick 70 in round six. That's a decent keeper. We know what Tyler Lockett is at this point. Rashad Bateman, another option for Minnie. ECR is 92, and he can have him in round nine, pick 103. Optional, Jamal Williams, uh, ECR is 117. I don't think Kamara's suspension is going to push that up much. Round 9, so at that point, keeper shifts coming down. I probably would pass, but he could keep Williams if he's a big fan of him. I notice that I don't have Kenny Pickett here. Don't keep Kenny Pickett. 
VC for mini is 285. He has that extra nine and middle of the road keepers. There's just not not a lot about Minnie's t- team to be excited for before the draft, which is fine. It means he's got a lot of options and a lot of flexibility on draft day. I'm putting him in the B range. I'm putting him just above Bannis, even though his his VC is closer to Mark and Stan, but I personally think he's a little bit down beneath them. Definitely a playoff contender this year, though, in my estimate. Next, let's get to, uh, this is a fun one to talk about, Wes. In 2022, Wes was ranked 7th, meaning he won the loser's bracket and got to pick his draft slot. Wes has a lot of keeper options, but first let's look at that draft board. Picking his own slot, he went with 12th overall. I get the strategy. I get that people like that back-to-back and nobody's sniping me in between. How to say this? While I understand the concept, I don't understand doing it in practice, and I just, I frankly disagree with it. Um, Which is fine. Wes is a really good fantasy football player, and he's running his team his way. But I think he's going to end up getting two players who neither feel like a first-round pick rather than two guys who are of that. You get what I'm saying? I feel like you take that end of the first round, so you feel like you're getting two really good guys, but it's going to feel like he's getting two eh, guys to build his team around. Wait, too much on that. Too much on that. Let's keep going. Wes has no five, and Wes has no six, which is also going to make it tough to build depth around those not top-end players. Now let's go through these options, no order. Like I said, Wes has a lot. You can keep George Pickens, go dogs. ECR, 75, Wes can have him round 9, pick 108. Rashad White, ECR, 70, Wes can have him round 10, pick 109. Patrick Mahomes, who Wes has kept a few years in a row now, probably our longest running single keeper on one team since Max traded him. Mahomes way back when. Mahomes' ECR is 26 as the elite quarterbacks are really climbing up this year. Round 3, pick 36, I think is a good value for him, but let's keep going. Ramondre Stevenson, ECR is 23. Wes can keep him in round 5. He doesn't have a 5th round pick at the moment, which would mean it would be 4-1. So 37th overall, even if he kept him an extra round ahead, that seems like a pretty good value. But I think he could get a lot of value out of trading back to the fifth. Trevor Lawrence, ECR 63, round 8, pick 85. And I think that's who Wes has locked in right now. Um, 22 difference between his ECR and where he'd be kept there. It's good. I don't dislike it. Jahan Dotson, also an option for Wes. Boy, ECR 71, Wes could keep him in round 7, pick 84. Between him, picking seems like he's a few more uh, picks of value and uh, can be kept a little later. So I think Pickens probably better overall value there. TJ Hawkinson, I would even consider to be an option on maybe a team that didn't have as many as Wes. ECR 51, round 4, Wes has 4-1, so we'd want to trade back. Um, but I don't think he's gonna. I don't think he's gonna keep Hawk under any situation. But it is an option. So let's just kind of put those all together in a chart here and look at this. So Pickens ECR seventy five, pick one hundred eight. That's good. White seventy one hundred nine. That's good too. But I really like Mahomes and Stevenson. I definitely like trading to get a fifth to keep Stevenson a little lower. I think that's his best keeper. And then I would probably say Mahomes is number two. And I don't think he has either of those guys in there right now. This is just my opinion. And obviously I would run my team a little differently than Wes is with the situation he has. I would pick George Pickens or Rashad White. Either one of them. They're kind of similar. But I'd pick George Pickens because go dogs. Patrick Mahomes and Ramondre Stevenson. And I think I think now you're building a team you can compete with. It feels to me like Wes is aiming at a team where he can keep guys multiple years like this is a half rebuild year and man maybe that's the strat coming coming back because i forgot to talk about this the zeke signing happened after i made these slides and it does move stevenson a bit for me 
Not enough, though. He still is my favorite keeper for West to have. Uh, his VC would be 237 with his picks, would be 240 with my picks without accounting for any trades or anything. So it would obviously jump up a good bit if he maneuvered to keep Ramondre. Um, he, Wes is clearly aiming for a team with depth. I like a team with high ends. And this is where I said earlier with my Grant pick that this is going to be a little controversial. I like Grant's setup more than Wes's. Hot take, maybe. Hot take. Either way, they both stink, but they're both still better than me. Spoiler alert. Let's move on. Marty. Marty over in the Attitude Era Conference. In 2022, Marty was ranked 8th. But is this the year of Marty? His draft board, first overall. He is an extra second. He is an extra fifth. He is an extra tenth. Marty. Marty Cooper. Good keeper pick, ECR 32. You can have him at pick 56 overall. Khalil Herbert, ECR 107. Not bad, not bad. Pick 121 overall, round 11, Marty can keep him. That's really it that I see. My inside sources tell me that Marty may be looking to keep somebody in the 8th round, and these are the options that would be there. Rodgers with an ECR 114, McKinnon 119, Odell Beckham 131, Brock Purdy, 167, and so I'm looking into the camera now, and I know Marty's watching this. Don't. Okay. Summary, though. Assuming he doesn't keep one of those round eight guys, VC, 372, the highest this year is Cooper as a keeper, and then an excellent draft board. Marty's a super team for me, and I'm all on the Marty train. Marty's my pick. This is the year he's going to get his championship before Grant does. Oh boy, that just that just feels like betting on the Browns. But, <laughs> but good luck, Marty. Good luck. It's, oh, man. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Moving on from Marty, who's going to be our league winner, let's jump to the exact opposite end and talk about me. 2022, I got ring number four, and boy, was it worth it. That said, this year could be a little rough. I have no second round pick, no five, no six. Eh, that's all the damage. My, I, I said earlier, I don't really like 10th overall. I'm very fidgety about who's going to be available there. But we're going to make it work. We can keep Josh Allen at least one more year. Probably not next year, buddy, so it's been a good run. ECR 28, can have him round four, pick 39. Just a victory lap after the ship for, for Josh. Christian Watson, ECR 50, can keep him in round eight, pick 87. That's good. Really hoping he takes another step forward so he can become a multi-year keeper for me. But And, and you know what? Before I listen to two tight ends... I had only somewhat considered I can keep Nick Chubb in the first round, and that would knock the concern about 110 out. I I love Nick Chubb. Go dogs. As a player, as a fantasy asset, I wish I was as high on him as Bill is. If I thought he was the second best running back for fantasy purposes this year, that would be an easy choice. Um, anyway, my situation is not good. But I still see... I'm working on it. I still see a line of hope that I can compete this year, but as a professional broadcaster, I must put me in my own pathetic little D tier down there at the bottom because I am not as good as Wes and I'm not as good as Grant and it is noticeable. It's okay. I like a challenge. Moving on. Swan. Last year's runner-up remains strong this year. See, Swan did the thing where he was good and he didn't get rid of everything. But we know how that ended. Swan picks ninth overall right in front of me. And he does not have an eighth. Otherwise, his board is his standard set. Top keepers. This is up there with Chase, of course. Justin Jefferson. Top of the board. Swan keeps him in round three. Pick 33 this year. So... Probably only one more year of keeping Jefferson, thank goodness. Let's not let that happen anymore. Let's not let any more 
Chase or Jefferson's happen, although it may be happening with Max and Garrett Wilson. So uh, D Lamb, Swan can keep. ECR is nine. Now he has to keep him in round two. And right now it'll be round two, pick 16. So hopefully Swan can trade down from there, get a little more value out of that. He's looking for an eighth. So maybe you want to include that Swan, swap some seconds, get an eighth. A tough call. Kenneth Walker, ECR is 60. Swan can have him round seven, pick 81. I like that. So with Walker, you have round ECR 60, pick 81. Madison is who I guess Swan's looking for this eighth round pick for, because right now he would have to be pick 81 as well. If Swan can move back to the end of the eighth round, he might be better value than Walker. I think either one, though, is going to be strong with those two wide receivers. Uh, he's going to have three top 12 players. Really nice. BC is 307, pretty darn high. Everything outside of that, though, gets to be pretty average going down the board. I like Swan in the B-plus tier, and this is going to be really interesting to watch. The You're starting to see here, I have color-coded the conferences looking at, it, at the chart. I don't know if that text is going to be a little too small for viewers at home. But you can see where the Fantasy Heart and Soul Conference has Grant, Wes, and myself down at the bottom. <laughs> and then all of the the Attitude Era conference is conglomerated in the BB+. Plus. So Mark, Swan, Stan, Minnie, Bannis. Assuming Marty doesn't completely blow it, only two of those five teams can make the playoffs, and they're going to be really close. It's going to be very fun to watch that conference and not be in it this year. Last, but definitely not least, Big Pa who uh, I think was Grant's number one in his rankings in the Two Tight Ends podcast, which, by the way, you should go listen, even though their new music is inferior to the first seasons. It happens. You have uh, new creative minds come in. Parker, last year, was ranked 10th, and he set up the rebuild early and often. He definitely looks pretty this year, picking two overall, Playing around with the idea of trading back. I don't think he has to, but I, I see, I think I see what he's thinking. Uh, he is an extra fifth, two extra sixth. Parker's keepers, Traylon Burks, avoided a scary injury. ECR 77. Uh, Burks can be had round eight, pick 95. J.K. Dobbins. ECR 64, Pa can keep him at round 7, pick 74. Isaiah Pacheco, I, I talked about Pacheco in my last video as well. ECR 85, um, and round 8, but Parker only has one eighth, so he's going to use the one on Traylon Burks. I don't know what the price would be to get another eighth. I think Pacheco is being a little underrated right now. And it's one of those things where would I put my money where my mouth is on draft day? And I think I would. I think he's being slept on a little bit alternatively Parker could have Jamison Williams ECR 127 round 11 he needs to go get an 11th round pick you have the suspension now tweaked hamstring it just seems like the beginning of his career has gone so not how you would want it to go so I don't think I don't know I don't know what Pa's gonna do I don't think it's going to matter because his draft board is so good. He doesn't have the elite keeper, but he is an elite draft board. So I consider him one of the super teams, and I put him right up there with Bill and Marty. Uh, certainly atop the Fantasy Heart and Soul Conference with Bill. Um, I do still have Marty number one. Granted, when I'm doing my previews, I'm not taking into consideration too much the player. I may bump a little bit. I'm just looking at the facts, and I like Marty's setup. I think Marty's got a great setup. This is the year of Marty. Right, here's your final tier list. See, Parker, Bill, and Max got three of my top four in my conference, and then bottom three all in my conference. Looking at the conferences, there is a discrepancy in overall strength. The Fantasy Heart and Souls total VC comes out to 1658, and the Attitude Eras comes out to 1826. With a and the standard deviation is more than double 
in our Korea conference. <laughs> it's great. Closing thoughts are it's going to be a good year. I'm excited. I'm good. I'm very happy. I'm sorry I got a little behind with the videos. Do not take that as a sign that my enthusiasm is not high. I've been sick for a lot of the last month. And doing this has gotten me very much in the mood. I'm very excited for this week to see those of you who are coming to Asheville and see the rest of you on video call. Good luck. That's it. If you are traveling to Asheville, be safe. Look both ways before you cross the street. And never leave a Thursday player in your flex. We'll see you in a few days.